Greetings programs, Atari here, you there. And this is the infamous Sony PlayStation Classic. And today we're actually going to take a peek and see what exactly makes this thing tick. This channel is made possible in part by Morning Fame, smarter analytics to simplify YouTube growth. Use the link on your screen right now to get your first month free. And by TubeBuddy, your best friend on the road to YouTube success. Use the affiliate link on your screen to sign up today. So, just to start off, we got one, two, three, four, five uh, number double zero screws, crosshead screws. And we'll just go ahead and take those and open her up. And of course, this is part of a series I'm doing here on the PlayStation Classic. Eventually, I'll be showing you how to properly hack this thing to where it is the system that, in the opinion of this reporter, was the system it should have been. I'll show you how to get to that point and make it look just as stock as it did the day you bought it. This is the Sony PlayStation Classic model number SCPH1000R. So we'll take a look here. We've got some uh, got some foil underneath there. These vents. We've got a couple of vent holes here. Uh, whether or not they function is a whole different story. But we'll go ahead and take the bottom off. And there you go. Looks like it's just. Uh, Looks like it's all just uh, cosmetic there, but this actually is it actually is through, so that's actually a little bit of a vent system. Now, of course, this is uh, ABS plastic here. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. It's all some detail there. You see ABS plastic, and uh, manufacturer's marking uh, 189. Uh, side of the board here. This is a LM11 1984020-21 Sony Interactive Interactive Entertainment Incorporated. Little registration marks, uh, a few other things. I uh, don't really see anything uh, too terribly interesting on the back here. Uh, we'll go ahead and dig in. I'll take these uh, four screws out screws here. The screws are grounded it looks like. This guy out, and we've got a big old RF shield heatsink thing here. Uh, let's see the interior of the top. Uh, another 18-9 marking. Uh, these are just the switches here for uh, open, reset, and disk change. Uh, looks like the vents on the side actually do go through. So there's that. It's not uh, it's not completely shut off uh, by the bottom clamshell. So there is some ventilation here, but not a whole heck of a lot. But it, not like it really needs it. It's not gonna get that hot, I would imagine. Uh, so let's take a peek up under this heat sink here. Heat sink, RF shield, whatever you are. Hold on, a little bit of thermal paste or something. There it goes. Let's 
that's a uh, it was just a little thermal pad there. Let's carefully take that off. Okay, so now here we are. Let's get in closer here. There we go. So LM11. 1-984-020-2 on side A, Sony Interactive Entertainment Incorporated. Uh, so let's see, we've got the little tack switch here. This is like a little brass button actuated tack switch, which is a nice touch here. Uh, this is power in. Uh, let's see. This is the power in. Looks like there are... Uh, ooh, interesting. It's just... It's just the power lines that are connected. No data lines. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, now, of course, you've probably seen all over the internet by now uh, the fact that you can't actually access anything from uh, this port here. But uh, we will see about that later. This is, of course, the HDMI here. Looks like we have what looks like a USB header right here. So this is apparently for serial access, uh, programming port, something like that. Uh, so. That may be something that interests us in the future, but as of right now, not really. Uh, let's see. Look a little bit further in here, we've got the MediaTek uh, MT6392A chip. Uh, it's probably... Um, what that one's for. We'll find out later. I'll put that on the screen. This is an RT RT 55482 RT 55482 chip. Uh, let's see. Um, this looks like that's probably a USB controller, but I can't tell. Uh, let's see. Here's the main processor. It's an ARM processor, MediaTek. MT8167A. Uh, so that's uh, that's the main uh, main processor there. We've got two NAN. No, these are RAM. Two RAM chips. Um, K4B4G16. Uh, E7HW1C. Figure out. I think that's uh, should be. A, And the SEC 837. This is the uh, this is the main memory. That's our NAND. That's our flash memory. That's where all the games are held, right there. Um, so very interesting. That uh, at least for me, it's interesting from you know a historical standpoint of having you know, grown up with the discs and each of those being what 750 ish megabytes, and you've got 20 of them just jam packed on the little little chip right there. It's very interesting to me. So that's that's pretty much it. Pretty standard fare for the interior here. Of course, two USB ports. Uh, not much else really going on inside this board. So um, we'll play with this a little bit more later uh, once once the hacking uh, becomes more uh, viable. Uh, we'll be looking at this, uh, doing a couple of different things with it, turning it into a interesting little system that we would all be proud of so so proud such as the nice uh, the nice uh, NES classics that, uh, that we know and love. So that is the interior of the uh, Sony PlayStation Classic and uh, stay tuned we will uh, we will do more with this and in the meantime social media right here subscribe down here bell notification let you know everything comes out up here is the rest of the playlist here or it's a video that uh, youtube thinks you'll enjoy and of course down here is a newsletter sign up for that and get you know, updates on everything that goes on here around the shop my name is atari and until next time tally ho y'all